if you remember the Pinocchio story, the forces that were pulling the strings were not, uh, they were not forces that were acting in Pinocchio's best interest, that's for sure. George Orwell, English essayist, incomparable commentator on socialist totalitarianism, even though he was a left winger and a brilliant one. Aldous Huxley, who wrote Brave New World, uh, had some very brilliant things to say about the potential demolition of sexual choice, of choice of sexual partner as a part of, part of a uh, dystopian future. Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, a philosopher who described himself as, as someone who thought with a hammer and Nietzsche is a very, very dangerous person and an absolutely brilliant writer. And Carl Jung, who was a student of Nietzsche and who, Nietzsche was the philosopher who had announced the death of God back in the late 1800s. And Jung spent his whole life attempting to revivify God. That's one way of thinking about it. And so if you or educate yourself, and this is a really good place to start, if you read these authors, then you'll know what else to read. If you read these authors, it'll, it'll take you a good long time and it will be very, very hard on you. And and you won't be the same person when you come out. And that's very frightening. And because being t torn down and rebuilt is no, is no joke, but it beats the hell out of the alternative, which is just to stagnate and stay a stagnant infant, which is which is not something I rec recommend. There's nothing uglier than a, a stagnant 40-year-old infant. So that's equivalent, just so you know, to Pinocchio, back to the Pinocchio story, re rescuing Geppetto from the underworld. Remember when he was, he had kind of turned into a half jackass after being at the, at Pleasure Island, where he was enticed, by the way, from a couple of people who, that was the fox and the cat, who attempted to entice himself into believing that he was a victim and needed a vacation. So Pinocchio was enticed onto Pleasure Island by two two figures that, that played on his sense of victimization and neurosis and suffering to convince him that he didn't have to he didn't have to take any responsibility for his own existence and he could just busy himself with impulsive pleasures right that's how he fell into the hands of the totalitarians on pleasure island um, anyways pinocchio after he left pleasure island had to go into the ocean twice and, and the second time he went into the ocean he was looking for his father well Everyone's father, from a mythological perspective, is dying in, in, in the underworld, in the chaos, because everyone inhabits a culture that's, that's sick and old, so to speak. And it's sick and old because it was made by the dead. And the living have to revivify it continually in order for it to be a dynamic force. And the living have to revivify their connection with the culture internally, too, because you're constructions of culture, although not only constructions of culture. And you have to understand history because otherwise you can't understand yourself. You're a historical creature. And so you have to rescue your dead father from the belly of the beast, from the dragon. Because remember the whale in Pinocchio is also a fire-breathing dragon. And that means you have to face the thing that you most fear. And when you do that, you'll rescue your father from the underworld. Um, these are very complex ideas and you can read about them in my book, Maps of Meaning, if you want. It's on the reading list. I put a free copy of it on jordanbpeterson.com so you can download it. I, I take apart these sorts of things in detail. So anyways, you have to revivify your father be before you can become real. And, and that's part of the problem with the, the feminist, in, feminist and social justice warrior insistence on the existence of the patriarchy. It's like everyone's known since the beginning of time that culture is corrupt and tyrannical. But it's also protective and benevolent. Even the language you use is a product of culture. And so you don't overthrow the patriarchy. You revivify your culture. And you do that by adopting responsibility for your own being and then acting as a moral agent in the culture. That's what you do to become educated. So read these books. Read these books. They'll change your life. I guarantee it. They'll change your life. They'll take you apart. They'll devastate you. And then they'll rebuild you into something far greater than you are now. And that's what to aim for. So then, and here's something that will help you. My colleagues and I have developed a series of online writing programs called the Self-Authoring Suite, and they help people write about their past and organize that and their present personality and organize and understand that. And then the future, and the future authoring program asks you to write about six different dimensions of your life. Um, so it asks you, first of all, to treat yourself as if you're someone that you want to help and, and that someone that you love and take care of and someone that you want to help. And then... It asks you, well, if you could if you could organize your life in the best possible manner, and in keeping with those principles we discussed earlier, um, what do you want? What do you want for your career? Like, what do you want? What would make your life meaningful? What do you want for your career? What do you want for your family and from your family? What do you want for an intimate relationship? Um, how are you going to handle 
How are you going to take care of your mental and physical health? How are you going to handle drug, drug and alcohol use? It asks you a series of fundamental questions like that to get your mind moving. And then it asks you to write for 15 minutes about what your life could be like 50, three to five years in the future if it was laid out like you were laying out a life for someone you deeply cared about. And so you're asked to write for 15 minutes about that without worrying too much about structure, the structure of the argument or, or, or any grammatical niceties. That, that's put off for later. So that gives you a little heaven to aim for, right? It's like, well, if I could have this, my life would be clearly worthwhile, even if I had to put up with a fair bit of suffering along the way. That's what you're trying to construct. And you could think about that as a heaven worth moving towards. And then the second part of the program asks you to write about what your life would be like three to five years down the road if all of your bad habits and nihilistic tendencies and, and proclivity towards resentment and lack of desire to shoulder responsibility, if all your weak points got the upper hand and just augured you into the ground. And everyone knows that. You know what you'd be like if you just let everything slide and, and you'd know what particular hell you were ended up heading towards. And so the, se the second part of the program asks you to write about what your life would be like three to five years down the road if everything just went to hell around you. And so that gives you a hell to avoid and a heaven to strive for. And you need both of those because that's what keeps you properly motivated in life. And then the second half of the program, the, th or the next part of the program, helps you turn your vision of the desirable future into an implementable reality and to articulate it fully and to articulate the arguments for why you want that. And those even help you overcome your own doubts, right? It's not only to argue against other people, it's to argue against the chattering demons of nihilism and hopelessness and ideological possession that, that exist in your mind and in society simultaneously. You need powerful weapons to fight back against those. So here's an offer for you. We've made the Future Authoring Program available free for the next while. Um, I don't know how long a while will be, but let's assume a week or something like that. And so if you go to www.selfauthoring.com slash futureauthoring.html, you can read about the program there. And, and now I, I got to tell you, we've used this program on about 5,000 university students so far, mostly in Holland, but some in Canada as well. And what we've shown is that they the program, if you, if you complete this program, even if you do it badly, and I would recommend it, do it badly, man. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do it perfectly. Do it badly and then maybe do it better as you move forward, but at least do it badly. It increases the performance of university students. It increases their grades by between 20 and 25% and decreases their dropout by about the same percent. And so we have data on 5,000 people. One of those papers has been published and I'll put that in the, in the description in the description of this video. And so this program really works if you do it. And, and so I would highly recommend that you do it. Anyways, you can read about the program there. Click purchase for $14.95. Then enter this code, change yourself. That'll give you a $14.95 discount. And that means you can have the program for free. And so here's what millennials should do if they want to change the world. The first thing they do, should do is orient themselves to, to the good. And that's away from evil, away from malevolence, away from the manufacture of pointless suffering and pain away from Auschwitz, let's say, and away from the Gulag Archipelago and the terrible Soviet camps and the massive murders that occurred in China. You want to get it, and you want to get as far away from that as you possibly can. Whatever direction is away from that is a good direction. And, and then you also want to contemplate what the highest possible good could look like for you and your family and your society. We already discussed that. And then you need to speak the truth in relationship to that. And then you need to educate yourself. And then you need to Shoulder your responsibility. Responsibility is a good thing because it makes you strong. To bear up under it makes you strong. You can turn yourself into a, you can free yourself from your strings and turn yourself into a genuine individual. And then you can shoulder the world. And then you're in a position to make, to make change. As a person like that, your mere being will change the world in a positive direction. And that's what you should be aiming for. So read the books that I put up on my site and do the future authoring program and that will improve your life dramatically and that's how you can change the world.